This presentation provides an overview of Johann Heinrich Pestalozzi's ethos and approach as carried out in the Pestalozzi world villages. Although in relation to Pestalozzi's philosophy, we usually hear about head, heart and hands, in our villages we put heart first. This is exactly what Pestalozzi also prioritised. He believed that without heart, however good your academic education, however excellent your practical skills, you would never be able to help yourself and others unless you have the loving, compassionate and caring qualities of the heart. So our village ethos is heart led. This means that the staff show an open and caring and loving attitude to the children. They spend time with the children. They interact with them both formally and informally. In this picture, you can see one of the children with an alumna who has come back to the Zambian village to do voluntary work. It really demonstrates the kind of cheerful and affectionate relationship that our staff and our children have with each other. Pestalozzi recognised that children learn by example. He uses an analogy of a musical instrument. It's an instrument with a double layer of strings. The musician plays only the top layer. The bottom layer vibrates accordingly. So the staff who interact with the children are the top layer. If they show love towards the child, the child will show love. If they trust the child, the child will become trusting. This means that the way the staff are chosen is extremely important. How the teacher is with the child is as or more important than what the child is taught. The attitude, the behaviour, the inner life of the staff, all of these are vital. The village is child-centred. The child's personal, physical, social and learning needs are at the centre. They are listened to, they are respected, they are seen as unique. And there is a student council giving as much autonomy to the children as possible. Again, Pestalozzi uses an analogy. The staff are like gardeners. They nurture the child, ensuring a safe environment for the child's development. The child is like the seed of a tree, gradually developing into a young sapling and then into a tree. All the child needs is tender, thoughtful support, safeguarding and care while developing their innate powers. In a child-centred approach, disciplining is never harsh. The staff never lose their tempers with the children. Punishment is always in proportion to the reason for the punishment. And this reason is explained to the children. For example, if a child is lazy about getting out of bed, that child could help for a week by ringing the morning bell. In Pestalozzi's opinion, children brought up with a heart-led, child-centred education will automatically be self-disciplined and will rarely need to be punished. This kind of approach helps ensure the good mental health of the children, helping them to feel good and be engaged with life, have positive emotions and self-esteem. Their mental health is supported with the Pestalozzi Values Education. There are activities to promote values such as trust, compassion and cooperation, along with the motivation to help others. So one such simple activity, which may be done with the Foundation House children, is to give each child a sweet and a spoon and tell them that they can eat the sweet, but only by using the spoon without bending their elbow. Eventually, they realise that the only way to do this is by feeding each other. By acknowledging and rewarding children who do good and behave in a positive Pestalozzi way, we help them feel pride in doing good. One example is through the distribution of head, heart and hand certificates. For example, the heart certificate is given to the kindest and most helpful child, while the all-rounder head, heart, hand certificate goes to the child who is academically good, skilled in vocational training activities, and turns their head and hand learning into action to support others. Children learn best by doing, by being active. So we give them plenty of opportunities for socially useful, productive work. This may be helping in the community, for example, by going into old people's homes or to underprivileged sections of the community to help out. As Pestalozzi recognised, it's only through real life experience of helping others that the children can learn the value of doing so. And it has a positive effect on themselves and on others. One of Pestalozzi's key aims was to help children grow up into independent adults who help themselves and others. 
Of course, socially useful productive work can take place within the village as well. For example, the children in the Zambian village once collected some money together to help with the funeral costs of the parents of their school friend. Another opportunity for socially useful productive work is through peer learning. This includes seniors teaching their juniors and classmates teaching each other. The heart-led ethos of the village is of utmost importance. Everything else follows from that. As mentioned on the previous slide, it is particularly important that children gain the skills and motivation to help themselves and others. Pestalozzi very strongly argued for practical skills, the hand skills. He recognised a lack in himself of practical skills, and he saw this as a disadvantage. He taught children the skills that he thought would be most likely to be useful and relevant to them in their adult lives. In the village, the skills programme includes the traditional vocational skills, carpentry, sewing, cooking and organic vegetable gardening, amongst others, that the children may have learnt at home. These skills are likely to continue to be of use to them, whether or not they later become part of their careers. In this photo, you can see one of the students at the Nepalese village. He has just picked okra from their organic vegetable garden. The villages also run entrepreneurial skills programmes for setting up and running small businesses. These include skills like budgeting, marketing, sales and reinvestment. Recently, the Indian village had different groups selling items they'd made at Diwali. One such group was the Woody Woodpeckers, the carpentry group. For Pestalozzi, education was also to help children recognise the value of money, save it and spend it wisely. This is one important aspect of the entrepreneurial skills programme. As already mentioned, the skills offered should be relevant to the times and stand children in good stead when they become adults. So we include in our programme the new skills, skills using new tech tools and technologies such as computers and IT, graphic design, for example, having a cyber cafe, offering a course on mobile phone repair, etc. Then there are the life skills the practical skills and knowledge that help people to manage their everyday lives. These include budgeting, communication through, for example, email, also communication in an interview situation or public speaking and debate. Career support and advice are also provided. Life skills can also be understood to include the activities that the children take part in around the village, such as keeping the dormitories clean, making sure the lawn is neat and tidy. These are skills which they almost certainly had at home and shouldn't be lost because they contribute to the child's independence and self-sufficiency when they become adults. Interestingly, Pestalozzi included social skills in the hand skills because he recognised that if someone is not able to function well socially, it will be very hard for them to succeed, no matter how academically brilliant they are or how practically able they are and only with social skills can we practically help others. Pestalozzi emphasised very strongly the importance of a child enjoying the whole learning experience and so leisure activities are vital. He also emphasised that children should not sit still. It goes against their nature to sit still. Children should engage in outdoor activity in the natural world as much as possible, engaging all their senses in the learning experience. Pestalozzi actually introduced sports to the school curriculum in Switzerland, and sports are an important part of village life, contributing to teamwork and a spirit of unity. He also introduced music to the school curriculum, believing that music has a positive effect on people's feelings, leading to happiness and benevolence. The villages have various clubs, including a music club where children can opt to learn to play a musical instrument. Pestalozzi introduced field trips for geography and science, and the villages support the schools by encouraging the children to go out on excursions. The idea is to give opportunities for children to develop interests through these leisure activities and through clubs. Children in the Pestalozzi villages attend good local schools in India and Nepal, and there is of course the Pestalozzi Education Centre in Zambia on site. This means that the role of the villagers is to provide academic support. 
This is achieved through having a library, a computer lab, by offering research support and extra tuition, by taking children on educational excursions, by celebrating awareness days. This is particularly the case in Nepal, where many days for international awareness are celebrated, giving children opportunities to learn about international issues. Academic support is also offered through peer learning. In these pictures, older children of the Indian village are teaching and supporting younger children. Pestalozzi recognised that children only learn by doing. So the academic support provided by the villages is as active and engaging as possible, to as great an extent as possible, avoiding the theoretical but emphasising activity. For Pestalozzi, one of the most important things that education can provide is a non-judgmental attitude. He argued that children should understand all sides of an argument or all aspects of a situation before forming an opinion. In fact, he argued that the time of learning is not the time for forming an opinion at all. He believed that a non-judgmental attitude leads to independence of character and balance, and that it also ensures true democracy. Because of the kind of highly academic schools that the children go to, the head skills tend to dominate. So in this presentation, I have changed the order to heart, hands and head. In the Pestalozzi World Villages, we are looking at an all round experience for the children, but one which prioritises the heart and provides a wide ranging extracurricular programme of practical skills. Our challenge is to ensure that this heart led practical education with its potential to transform individuals and communities is delivered to our children who attend schools and live in environments where academic skills tend to be prioritised.